Greetings, everyone, and welcome to, what are we on, week three? Week three of the Halloween Horror Fest comic book edition on the Multimedia Chronicles. Today, I thought we would talk about some comics that I've got that um, are essentially spin-offs of horror movies. Now, <laughs> it's been, it was kind of interesting to me going through the comic book collection and pulling out stuff that I thought would make for interesting Halloween-related videos. I could have sworn I had more horror comics in my collection, but I think I think what a lot of what I remember in terms of horror comics is stuff that I always saw around and might have read over at friends' places, but never actually owned. So, truth be told, I really don't have a lot. <laughs> so, well, we'll talk about what little I have, a few, uh, few little gems that you may or may not have heard of, and then, uh, well, I guess over the course of the year I'll try to work on the horror collection, the horror comic collection, a little bit more, so that next October I'll have more, a, a wider variety of stuff to talk about. Oh well, we'll do what we can, today, on the Multimedia Chronicles. Welcome back. Um, one thing I should mention is uh, some of the hardcore collectors among you may cringe from time to time when they see the condition of some of my comics. Uh, again, I buy primarily to read, but I do try to keep them in nice condition whenever possible. Sometimes I just don't get them in good condition, so I don't, you know, go out of my way to bag and back them because it doesn't seem to be much point. Um, but a lot of a lot of my uh, comics are not bagged or backed. They are kept in comic boxes, so they are protected, so no worries there. And they're kept in a safe place with no pipes or anything nearby, so no, no worries of water damage or anything like that. But the reason a lot of them don't, no longer have bags and backings is because a few years ago I was actually selling comics on eBay. Uh, a lot of my duplicates and, and some stuff that I had bought purely for resale purchase, uh, purposes, basically stuff I'd bought for investment purposes years ago uh, went up in value so I tried to get some some coin for them on eBay. So for the ones that I sold on eBay, if they didn't already have bags and backings, a lot of the more valuable ones did obviously because uh, you know you want to protect those. Um, a lot of them didn't so I basically rated my collection for the best best condition bags and backings to use for the ones that I was selling to people because obviously I want to sell them bagged and backed just because you know People like to get them that way, so yeah. One of these days, I gotta sit down and uh, and rebag and reback my collection properly. But there's just so frickin' many comics that it's gonna <laughs> it's gonna take me a while to to actually get the cash to buy the bags and backings to do it properly. So yeah. Anyway, just wanted to get that out in the open, and uh, yeah. So first up. Comics based on horror movies. Now, I'm not necessarily talking about comic book adaptations of horror movies, although you will see one or two in here. Um, I'm talking specifically about comic books that are spin-offs of horror movies, or based on horror movies, basically do new stories based on the concepts uh, of those horror movies. I have a stray hair dangling in front of my face. Um, now, of course, there's been a lot of comics, comic spin-offs of movies and TV shows over the years. Uh, you know, Star Trek and Star Wars, for example, have had umpteen uh, spin-offs from a variety of companies over the years and, and actually are still going. And there's been quite a few based on horror movies as well. Um, so some of the ones I want to talk about are ones that you may or may not be aware of. A little bit obscure, not uh, anywhere near as, as huge as Star Trek or Star Wars, but still worthy of note. First off, we have a two-issue limited series from Dark Horse, based on my all-time favorite sci-fi horror movie, The Thing. This is actually, they went with The Thing from Another World title, which was the 50s movie title. I can only assume because there's a Marvel Comics character called The Thing, Ben Grimm from the Fantastic Four and there was a Thing comic book as well, so maybe they went with the older title to prevent copyright infringement. But you can tell from the covers, I mean, this is clearly based on the 80s movie. <laughs> um, 
So in case you're wondering, yes, this is actually a sequel story to the 1982 movie. And honestly, I think they do a pretty decent job of it. If we just take a little flip through here, um, let me see. You can see the, uh, the artwork is actually quite nice. It's this beautiful painted artwork that, uh, you know, they obviously took a lot of time to, to put together. And it's quite, uh, quite nice, very dark and crazy. And the, gore, uh, the gory parts are suitably disturbing and disgusting, just like the movie. Um, yeah, so there we go. So you can see there's quite uh, some quite nice artwork in there. And as far as the continuation of the story goes, it's actually pretty decent. Like, as much as I say I would hate to see a sequel to the movie, um, I don't mind things like this, comic books that kind of take the concept to the next step and beyond. Now, they did a few spin-offs uh, in this series. This was the first one that they did, two-issue limited series. This was immediately followed by a four-issue limited series, which was entitled The Thing from Another World, Climate of Fear. So this is the first one, so it's just The Thing from Another World. It's a direct sequel to the movie. And then further ones had subtitles as well, so it was like to distinguish each series. I don't actually know off the top of my head how many of them they did. The only other issue I have, I really want to complete this set because I actually really enjoy the comic. The only other one I have is this one, which was another four-issue series called Eternal Vows. And this is the first issue. Now in this one, they actually went with more, uh, more straightforward artwork, like typical comic book artwork. It's still quite good though. I mean, the, the level of detail is quite nice and uh, it, it's done in a very cinematic style, which is which is very cool. Dark Horse has always been really good at doing uh, comic books based on movies. They're the company that's been doing the uh, Star Wars comics for years. So anyway, there you go. The Thing from Another World, comic books. If you liked the, the 1982 movie, you might want to check out the comics because it uh, continues the story. Eternal Vows is interesting actually because it finally sort of answers the question what would happen if the thing actually made it to a civilized area? It's also a little unusual in that the thing itself actually communicates mentally with its victims. So there's sort of internal conversations between the victim that it's taken over, like the, the consciousness of the original victim, and the thing. So it attempts to, to answer some of the questions I brought up in my review, namely, is the person who's been taken over aware that they've been taken over? Is the thing even aware of itself kind of thing like or is it more just instinctive well in this one it basically says flat out no there's full consciousness on both both sides and conversations internally happening between them so kind of an interesting concept don't know if i fully agree with that um but hey makes for a good read oh <laughs> i think the background just shifted a little bit didn't it yeah so i was just flipping the screen around to check the time and i think i bump the camera a little bit. Well, next up, next up we have one that uh, 80s horror movie fans might get a kick out of. Now this one starts off as a comic book adaptation, two issue comic book adaptation, um, of Fright Night. Good old mid 80s uh, horror comedy. There was of course two movies. This is, uh, this was done I believe between the first and second movie. When did this come out? This was 1988. Yeah, I think it was shortly before the second movie came out. I can't actually remember when the second movie came out. But um, really good. Independent uh, comic company again. This one's from Now Comics. Now Comics did a lot of comic books based on TV shows and movies. They did the real Ghostbusters. They did a great series based on the Green Hornet. Um, they did the very first ever Terminator comics. Now, coincidentally, Dark Horse, which I just mentioned, actually does Terminator comics. They've been doing it for quite a while. So this is the second issue of the comic book adaptation. And then from the third issue onward, they started doing all new stories. So the way that the, uh, the comic was structured is they would have the main story that would feature Peter Vincent and the other surviving characters from the movie um, dealing with some strange supernatural menace. And then there would be a backup story, which, which usually had the flavor of one of the old EC horror anthology type story. It's just a short like three or like four or five page backup story. And uh, 
Yeah, but it's a lot of fun. Like, as far as the original stories go that continue on from the end of the movie, I thought they were pretty good, actually. Um, they, they definitely, I think, succeeded in capturing the flavor of the movie. They have the same kind of tongue-in-cheek humor, and, and they're just kind of kind of weird and stuff. And the, um, the artwork in the actual comic isn't bad. This is about some kid who loves spiders who basically turns into a spider. Oh, and look, on the back, ad for the real Ghostbusters. There you go. And um, then this one here was a story about these, uh, these weird bat creatures that would attach to the heads of victims and uh, feed on their memories. And uh, pretty interesting stuff. So... Yeah, so I don't actually have a lot of issues with this either. I'd, I'd really like to get some more of them. Uh, I basically just have these four. One, issues one, two, three, and five. <laughs> and then, a few years later, they re-released the story about the strange bat creatures, but in 3D! So this is a special 3D issue. So we take a quick... Uh, I actually still have it in the original bag that it came in. So if we take a look here... Got the 3D, these are the actual 3D glasses. It says 3D video glasses. It's the good old red and blue. I find the red and blue 3D really doesn't work very well for movies, but it works really well for comic books. Anything that's in print that isn't moving, uh, I find it works really, really well. So this actually reprints the entire issue, including the backup story, which was Revenge of the Vengeful Avenger. <laughs> which is a very tongue-in-cheek take on the classic sort of, uh, you know, person who is wronged, killed, and brought back to life as a vengeful zombie. But the, uh, in the case of this one, the narrator ends up killing everybody because all the zombie wants to do is go and do all the stuff he never got the chance to do when he was alive. He's like, oh, cool, I'm alive again. I want to go to the carnival. I want to eat popcorn. And... And the narrator's just like, what the hell are you doing? You should be going and killing the people that wronged you. And it's like, no, I don't want to do that. I just want, oh, Ferris wheel, you know. <laughs> it's like the most, like, wimpy zombie, geeky zombie you've ever seen in your life. So finally the narrator takes matters into his own hands. He's like, well, i got a quota of death, destruction, and carnage to fill here. I mean, this is supposed to be a horror story. So he actually goes and kills the people who killed the the other guy. And it's just hilarious. So, yeah, so that's the kind of things you can expect from the Fright Night comic. I mean, you get the, the main stories, which follow the, the, the primary characters that you're familiar with from the movies, and then the backup stories are usually a lot of fun as well. So that's why I'd actually really like to get the rest of these, because um, cause I really enjoyed these. I really enjoyed it. In fact, I'd even say I enjoyed them a little bit more than the movie, which is, I know, a pretty bold statement. But uh, the movie was pretty good. Then we have a comic book based on, one of the few comic books actually, based on one of my all-time favorite movie villains, Freddy Krueger, with Innovation Comics' Nightmares on Elm Street. This is the first issue, and in case you're wondering when it came out, it was shortly before Freddy's Dead came out, the sixth movie. Now, again, this is, this is a pretty slick comic. I mean, you take a look at the artwork there, that's pretty nice. Innovation was doing a lot of different comics like this at the time, based on a variety of properties. They did one based on, yeah, actually they did one based on Quantum Leap. You can see the ad there. And, uh, and almost all of them had this beautiful painted artwork. Like, they didn't just do standard artwork. So they did uh, this beautiful painted artwork on glossy paper, and it was really cool. Now this, uh, this particular Nightmare on Elm Street comic is not the first one. It's another, another look at uh, one of the dream sequences there. The thing I like about this is actually the, the dream sequences are suitably surreal, and the painted artwork really lends itself well to that. And I think they did a really fabulous job with this. And, uh, and there on the back you can see an ad for the second issue. I don't have the second issue. Um, now, the Nightmare on Elm Street comics... I don't know why, because there's been so many horror comics over the years, but typically it seems the Nightmare on Elm Street comics tend to get cancelled very quickly for whatever reason, 
presumably some kind of controversy about the violence or something. I don't know. But there are so many other horror comics out there that are so much worse in terms of graphic content and potential controversy out there. Why is everybody picking on Freddy all the time? That's what I don't understand. Now, I was going to say, this is not the first time there was a Nightmare on Elm Street comic. There was one earlier, came out around the time of Nightmare on Elm Street 4, I believe, that was put out by Marvel Comics as part of their uh, black and white magazine style comic line. Uh, there was other comics that they did in that line, such as Savage Sword of Conan, The Tomb of Dracula, Howard the Duck even had a black and white comic for a little while. Um, so anyway, they, they thought, well, we'll do it as the black and white line, because that was geared more towards adults, like old, you know, mature readers, and then they could just cut loose with the, the blood and guts and stuff. Well, I have all two issues that they published of that. Uh, sadly, they're packed away somewhere. I don't know where. When I find them, I'll show you. Don't worry. Um, still kind of digging stuff out of the collection. But um, I don't know why. I don't know why they keep picking on Freddy with the comics. Because my understanding is the Freddy comics have sold quite well over the years. And so it's not through lack of sales that they're being cancelled. I think it's just, I don't know. Uh, maybe it's because he was a child killer or something. But I mean, that's not, that's not even what the comics are about. They're about this dream killer, killing people in their dreams, and it's like, I don't know, people need to get sticks out of their asses, I swear, it's like, okay, we can't pick on EC Comics anymore, so we're going to pick on Freddy, yeah, well, go to hell, seriously, just go to hell, all right, and finally, finally, this kind of ties in, I'm kind of tying things in a little bit here, it's completely unintentional, but it just kind of worked out that way, finally, we have a series of comics based on the Blair Witch Project. Yes, that's right. They did comics based on Blair Witch. Now, if you take a look inside, it's uh, done in beautiful black and white. This is from Oni Press, which is a, an independent uh, comic book company that's done a lot of stuff over the years. They're still going. They do a whole bunch, a whole variety of things. But um, now, sort of the origins of this are similar to the origins of some of the marketing material for the original movie. Now, the original movie had a book that was published uh, to promote it. Um, I have it somewhere, again, packed away. I don't know where it is. I'll show you when I get it, or when I dig it out. Um, and the book was really interesting, because remember how I was talking about how they tried to, in a lot of the marketing, they tried to pass it off as if it was real, and they did like faux documentaries and such to try to build on that, and and they and the, also the fact that I was really impressed just with the whole mythology and backstory that they created for it. Well, in the book that was published, it was basically a collection of uh, supposed, like, basically fake police reports, newspaper clippings, old drawings of witch burnings and things like that. All fake, but made to look very convincing and very real. And they did the same kind of thing on the website at the time. They had a website that had all this, this uh, material. Well, by the same token, that's how Oni Press decided to approach the comic book, was that they were, the, there's like a, a fake letter at the beginning here saying that, um, you know, they were approached to do, to tell some of the backstory and some of the history uh, surrounding the, uh, the, the, the Blair Witch and to tie it in with the events of the, uh, the missing filmmakers and, but to do it as a comic book. So they did it as a comic book. So this very much has the same kind of tone and flavor as the book and the website, but it's just, it's telling additional stories and flesh, further fleshing out the mythology in comic book form. Now, originally they did this one, which is a direct tie-in with the movie, and ties in with a lot of the stories that you see uh, in the movie or that you hear about the, the townspeople talking about. And then they did a four-part series called The Blair Witch Chronicles. Now, I'm missing one issue of this. There is, uh, yeah, I'm missing issue three. Now, the thing that's interesting about the Blair Witch Chronicles is, again, it's additional stories that build on the mythology and expand on stories that you heard about in the movie or in the book or the website, and uh, basically just fleshes things out a little more. So, we've got three of the four issues here. And what's really cool about this is the stories are essentially told in reverse chronology. So as you work your way through the miniseries from 1 through 4, you start in issue 1 in modern day. And then as you work your way through the four issues, you go back and back and back in time until finally in the final issue, you actually get to meet Ellie Kedward, the Blair Witch, and see 
what the circumstances were concerning her uh, demise and whatnot, and what she was like when she was alive and stuff like that. And it's it's pretty cool. And actually, you see a little bit of that in the Blair, in the first Blair Witch uh, comic as well. Now they did do one more comic, which was a tie-in with the second movie, Book of Shadows, Blair Witch Two. Uh, yeah, so I guess total they did six comics, of which I have four. So I should really get off my ass and just get the last two and complete the set already. Yeah, I don't know what I'm waiting for. <laughs> anyway, there you go. Lots of cool comics based on movies. You can't go wrong. Scary stuff, kids. If you liked the movies of all of these, chances are you'll enjoy the comics as well because they definitely... Uh, expand on the characters and expand on the mythologies and for the most part are pretty true to the spirit of the movies on which they are based. So there you go. I hope to complete most of these sets. Actually I guess these are all incomplete sets, aren't they? Yeah. I don't have a single complete set here, just sort of random issues. Anyway, I'll get the rest of them eventually. <laughs> anyway, that's it for me to you for now. So until next time, thanks for watching and sayonara.